hey everybody welcome back to my view on the view come on in let's get started come on trying hard but you want to be my friend in a place to ride in well, welcome back, everybody. This is My View on the View, a commentary podcast all about ABC's The View for people like me who love this show and watch it every single day. Um, unless there's an emergency, we simply do not miss a show. We love the conversations. We love the current table we have. And so thank you so much for joining me because for me, you are like my view friend. No one in my home watches it. No one in my family or friends set watches the show. No one cares about this show. <laughs> um, and so for me, it's just great to have someone to talk to and vibe with like you who also watches the show every day. So thanks for being here. Now, let's have an OG viewer chat as we are preparing for a brand new week of live shows. The view will be, I want to put everyone on notice who um, doesn't know, the view will be on their summer hiatus soon. Okay. That's going to be coming in the next few weeks. Um, But this week, um, there are no reruns because they will be in the studio. So as I said, live shows. Okay. And we kind of touched on it before. Stephanie Grisham will be back to guest co-host this week. She will be sitting in the conservative seat. She'll be guest co-hosting Tuesday through Friday. And I've got three things that I, as a viewer, need Stephanie Grisham to show me <laughs> she needs to do mm-hmm, this, this time around. Let me tell you why for me, I'm kind of getting fed up with Stephanie Grisham's auditioning. Okay. It's because for her, all right, all of her weeks total that she's been there, okay, come up to something like eight or nine weeks, all right? We've seen her now consistently for a total of eight or nine weeks. And I feel like as a viewer, that is long enough for her to show us what she has, what she's going to bring to the table, should she get this job. And um, there she's seriously lacking in some areas. And I, as a viewer, am kind of beginning to feel like Stephanie Grisham is played out. You know, like uh, what she's got to offer is so like nothing, okay, that it's like played out for me. You know, my mom and her sisters used to have, used to use that phrase a lot growing up, when we were growing up. That relationship is played out. Okay, you cooking that again, that's played out. Oh, girl, please, that, that job is played out. Okay, I've got another job, all right? So for me, Stephanie Grisham, if I don't see some change here in these three areas, she's just played out for me. Like, I'm not, uh, I'm going to watch, of course, because I love the show itself. So no matter who's there, I can just turn on a different channel when she starts talking, right? The way we used to do Megan. But I will tell you, um, there needs to be some serious movement, okay? Because they're getting down to the wire. So number one, This week when Stephanie comes, y'all, for me as a viewer, I need her to show me that she can do more than just gossip at the table and tell us juicy stories about her time in the White House. Like for me, that's becoming played out because that's about all we're getting. I'm getting from her as a viewer all these eight to nine weeks. Um, I need more. Okay, listen, all of us, if we're honest, (laughs) that's if we're honest. We, we love a good gossip session. We love the juicy, oozy stories about what happened, you know, that nobody's heard. All of us love that. But, you know, after a while, when that's all she's bringing to the table, it's kind of like, mm, heard that. Let's move on. Number two, when she comes this week, y'all, I need Stephanie to show me as a viewer that she actually is knowledgeable about these political topics that they're talking about and stop compensating for her lack of knowledge. Now, I am not going to go into any detail about the ways that Stephanie Grisham has been compensating because, again, you know, our time together is for folks who watch the show every single day. And so, you you know, if you think, if you agree with me, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't agree with me, that's that's okay, too. But if you've seen the show and you, you think this, you know exactly the way she's been doing this. Um, you know what? We all know that just because someone has a particular job in a particular field does not mean they're knowledgeable in that field. They could have that job for all kinds of reasons. Uh, it could be, you know, a, a nepotism type situation, right? Remember Jared Kushner? Um, he was married to Ivanka. He was over foreign policy. He had no foreign policy experience, but he was just in the job. So for me, even though Stephanie Grisham was in the White House all four years, um, she was the press secretary even at once, even though she never at, at one time, excuse me, even though she never actually functioned in that position, uh, let her tell it because he wouldn't let her. Um, Even though she was assistant to Melania, she was friends with them for years, even before they got into the White House. 
it's very obvious to me, seeing her now over the span of these many weeks, that she, Stephanie Grisham herself, has very little political knowledge, okay? So again, just because she was there and and, and in an, a presidential administration, okay, and had very serious job titles, I, I don't know, she doesn't have any political knowledge because it shows when they're talking about politics. Now, anytime they start asking questions or talking about Donald Trump or someone who worked With uh, her, she is very knowledgeable, of course, about that person's behavior and the goings on. But when it comes to talking about what's going on in these primary midterm elections, these runoff elections, a lot of us are about to vote uh, in the runoff elections for those who didn't get over 50 percent of the votes in the in the primaries. She just doesn't. I mean, she just doesn't have it. Okay, she's very, very surface. And then the third thing I need to see. okay, because it's like, okay, girl, I'm about to just cross your name off my list as a viewer. Okay. I need Stephanie to stop for the love of God playing the victim at this table. Okay. We all know people like this, that every time something goes on, they're somehow the victim. Okay. Um, and again, if you've been watching the shows, you know exactly what I'm referring to. When I say Stephanie, very often, um, she resorts to playing the victim. Okay. She doesn't have any knowledge about this stuff. She doesn't have anything to say. So as soon as somebody says something, here we go with Stephanie playing the victim. Again, it's becoming a played out thing. Okay. Um, as I wrap up our time together about Stephanie, I will just say, It's becoming very obvious to me, again, seeing her now over this long span of time, um, that when it comes to this job and this table and these types of conversations, there's just no real depth to Stephanie. Now, I'm not talking about Stephanie Grisham as a person, as a woman, okay? I'm sure she has a lot of depth, okay? But when when she sits down, and the cameras are turned on and it's time to talk about politics. It's even time to talk about pop culture. She just doesn't give us much. And that, you know, for me, that that is representative of just no depth in these particular areas. OK, just very surface. OK, so what I will say is I am very grateful to The View for actually doing it the way they're doing this, because it's very easy for all of us as viewers to, because we all have our particular person we want to get this job, right? Um, We all have that. But it's very easy for us to only see someone one or two, three, four times and kind of make up our mind as viewers about whether they would do a good job uh, at the job itself and also whether they would vibe with the women. But Seeing the person over a long span of time is really the best route that they could have gone because we've now seen Alyssa Fair over a long period of time. We've seen Stephanie Grisham over a long period of time. We're getting to see Lindsey Granger over a long period of time. Okay, because it seems to me that those are the three women who are in contending for the chair. Again, I think they may give it to Alyssa, but we'll have to wait and see. They may, as I've said before, do a situation where they keep that seat as a rotating seat with just three people. Like we'll see one of those people a week, you know, maybe Stephanie this week, Lindsay next week, so much and such next week, right? Um, They could go that route as well. But I will just tell you, um, this is the best thing because we're getting to see them over a long period of time and patterns begin to emerge and consistencies or inconsistencies begin to emerge. And so I will tell you when Brian Tedda told the press that he was going to take a little time to fill that seat, at first as a viewer, I was like, oh, I was tired. Like a lot of viewers, like, when are they going to come to a decision? I'm sick and tired of it. When, when, when? And now I'm beginning to see the value of taking this route. It really is. It helps you see people. And again, the patterns and consistencies are lack thereof. And now as I end, because our time together isn't really about the view, it's about me and you, I want to now pivot to a greater conversation. This same approach is the same approach we all need to take in building relationships and friendships. For all of you listening who are single, take time to actually get to know people. You know, I have heard of people who have dated for three weeks and gotten married. I've known of people who I've actually known people dated for like three months and got married. Okay. Or less time or longer time and never got married. We know that each person's journey is their own, but the safest route to go is to take time to get to know a person. When you're going to get in a business relationship, 
when you're going to, um, you know, let's just take it to another type of decision, move into a certain home, take the time to do your research on that home, on that neighborhood, take weeks if you need to. If you're in a situation where somebody's like, you got to make a decision today, you got to make it within 24 hours, you may need to pass that up. If you haven't given yourself the time it takes to truly research and, and, and know exactly what you're doing, if you're thinking of changing churches, if you're thinking about changing schools, changing majors, any decision in life, Give yourself, and I should give myself as well, time to truly let let things play themselves out so that we can see the patterns. We can see what is really going on here. Um, I will tell you, it's better to put time in up front than to have to try to make it up on the back end. So again, I'm very grateful that the view is taking their time to, to fill that seat. It seems to be the best thing to do. Um, one of the things we identified is with Alyssa. You know, um, now Alyssa is not my choice to get the chair, even though like she's not the person I would choose as a viewer. I personally would choose someone else, but I'm going to understand what they're looking for. And the person that I would choose does not fit that. OK, but I will tell you, we're, one of the things that has emerged about Alyssa is that she was doing really good at the job, Right initially those few weeks, now that we've seen her over a longer span of time, we can see she can, they back her down very easily. They back her down very easily and it's becoming a pattern now, right? Um, Lindsay is still too fresh for us to identify her patterns. Um, She's only had two chemistry tests. So when we see her the third time, we'll get to see some things there that are consistent or inconsistent. Um, So anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in to our Sunday OG viewer chat as we prepare for this week's shows. Um, Yeah, you know, guys, I will tell you, um, the season will be over soon. Uh, May will be over soon. They're going to go into their summer break and then the season will be over in August. So time is moving by very, very fast. So we'll just have to see kind of how everything works out with our show. Well, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. This is My View on the View, a commentary podcast all about ABC's The View. I'll talk to you on the next one. Here we go, here we go again.